Next question comes to us from Chad. Chad writes, I have an intermediate term treasury fund. I'm pretty sure I fell asleep after like the second word there. <laughs> I fell asleep during. I have an intermediate term treasury fund and total it gets better and total bond market index fund in my retirement accounts. IRA and 401k. Based on my age, 43, I am currently too heavily weighted in these funds. I plan to reallocate by directing new contributions to my S&P 500 index fund. Is it okay to go one or two years without contributing to your bond fund? In other words, does dollar cost averaging apply to bond funds? So, what is dollar cost averaging? Dollar cost averaging is putting in the same amount into an investment over a regular basis. So, maybe like $100 a month each and every time. What happens is then when that investment is worth more, you buy fewer shares of it. When it drops, you buy more shares of it. And mathematically, if you do that regularly, you actually lower the average cost of purchasing that investment. So, it's a pretty smart strategy. Um, one question I would have for Sean is, so 43 years old, assuming this fellow is going to retire in his mid to late 60s, should someone that age have money in bonds? That's a great question. And I think a big part of this is going to be his risk tolerance. So, you know, that's sort of a, a parroted thing that a lot of people go to. More importantly, if you look at the research, instead of relying on your investor behavior, research shows that if you can hold investments, i.e. stocks, for at least a 20-year period, which in this case he'd have almost on the head, then you almost never lose money. And so in this case, you know, if you play that out, holding only stocks should lead to better outcomes than if he had a portion in bonds. So he may want to look at either reducing the exposure based on his temperament or going 100% stock. It is possible to do that and, and lead to good outcomes. Right. And as we discussed in a previous episode, actually, over the long term, bonds are riskier for a couple of reasons. Number one, they have historically lower returns, so you may not be able to meet your retirement goals. Number two, they don't keep up with inflation historically over the long term, as stocks do. Um, and actually, over like long periods, 20, 30 years, their volatility, as measured by standard deviation, is actually higher than stocks, which a lot of people don't know. And that comes from research from Jeremy Siegel and his great book, Stocks for the Long Run. So, people do think of bonds as safer than stocks, but over the long run, actually, bonds are riskier. So, his question about does dollar cost averaging work with bond funds? And it, it actually does because it works with any investment that is volatile. Now, bond funds are not as volatile as stock funds, but they do react to interest rates and the economy. And right now, bonds are just not an attractive investment in general. So I think dollar cost averaging into bond funds is a fine idea. Whether it's, I th in the end, his question is, is it okay to go one to two years without contributing to his bond fund? I think that's fine. You're, you're more like, dude. He's up on the bonds, it right. sounds like. A little bit, but because the best predictor of future bond returns is current interest rates, and they're so low right now. You know, it's like three, two to three percent versus in the stock market, the dividend yield is two and a half percent, and dividends grow over time, whereas interest rates on a on a fixed income bond, they do not. So so generally speaking, as long as the past looks anything or the future looks anything like the past, he's gonna be better off in stocks. But that risk tolerance is important. What really what that means is if this drops 50% and you're going to freak out because that's what happens to stocks all the time, then you shouldn't have it all in the stock market. You should have some in bonds. Okay. All and right. I should also say that the dollar cost averaging works in a different way too, specifically with bonds because interest rates move. And so, especially if you have individually held bonds that have different interest rates that apply to them because they all do as they mature, you can actually dollar cost average into higher yielding bonds over time because the assumption is interest rates should go up in the near right. term. Possibly not, but but they should. And as those new bonds are issued, they yield a higher rate of return than your existing bonds, which are at a low, the, the mentioned low interest rate. Yeah. So you can also dollar cost average into higher yielding bonds. That's something to keep in mind. 